today I want to talk about generational cycle. Now, some people call them curses, but I like cycles. Because we need to put it out there, you know, what it means to be a uh, curse. And is a believer curse when they get saved? And I'm going to share that with you, but, but I want to explain to you that there are cycles. And I saw myself in a cycle. And you're going to see yourself in a cycle. And there are some things that got to be broken. It's in your bloodline. Guess what? The cycle that you're dealing with is not your fault. But at the same time, you need to find out about the cycle. And you got to learn how to break the cycle. Because if you don't break it, it becomes demonic. Are y'all with me? If you don't break the cycle, it's going to become demonic. And all you're going to do is do what? It's what was done to you. It was passed down to you. And you're going to pass it down to your children. And your children are going to keep doing that. Somebody got to break these generational cycles that we're dealing with. Give me Exodus, the 34th chapter, verse 6 and 7. Read as follows. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness. Go back. In goodness and truth. Okay. Keeping mercy for thousands Forgiven iniquity. Somebody say iniquity. Because we're going to deal with that. And transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear the guilty. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children until the third and what? Fourth generation. So we know, it's, so we know that we can be affected all the way from our what? Fourth generation generation. I want to deal with this because this is very serious. A lot of us we seem like we are trapped in certain things. That there are certain things we can't break or we can't shake. There are certain things that we almost regurgitated. We just seem like we're going in a cycle or a cycle. Remember the children of Israel? For 40 years they kept going in a circle. They couldn't break that tr they couldn't break that trend that they were dealing with. Let me give you the definition of cycle. You may want to take a picture of it now. I want to warn you Android, it's going to come up with something else. Okay. It's defined as a series of events that are regularly repeated in the same order. Other words, are, other words for that are patterns and trends. There are some negative repetitions in our lives that need to be broken. Put that back up there. Flip it. I want them to get this. The definition of cycle is a series of events that are regularly, not every, not every now and then, regularly repeated in the same order. Other words for it are patterns or in trends. There are some negative repetitions in our lives that need to be broken. Can we work with this for a second? That need to be broken. The pot cannot talk about the kettle. Like I say, all of us got some cycles in our lives that needs to be broken. Amen? And we constantly repeat them. One of the things, one of the reasons why we repeat certain bad negative uh, cycles is because, because it becomes a habit form. When you are in a habit form, a habit form means that you do it without even consciously thinking about it. This is something that you do. Amen? And we need to break some of these things. And today I want to deal with something. You know in that passage of scripture, it said it was three words that we'd like to lump up as one word. The three words was iniquity, transgression, and sin. Now, these three comes from, watch this, come from the same tree, but they are different branches. I'm going to say that again. These three come from the same tree, but they are different branches. Let's define all three of them so we can clarify this real quick. What is sin? Let me give you the definition of sin in case you don't know it. Sin is an, off, sin is an offense against religious or moral laws. In some cases, we call it missing God's mark. There's a scripture in the first, I think it's 1 John, the third chapter somewhere, talking about uh, uh, it's the transgression against the law. Did y'all get that? The definition of sin? Okay, y'all looking at me strange, so I guess you got it. The second word is transgression. 
Transgression is something that is against a command or a law. That's transgression. When you transgress something, when some, someone say, when someone put on a sign that no trespassing, when you trespassing, you, you went against the laws of that individual. Huh? That's what transgression is. But the third one is iniquity. This is, this is where we need to deal with. Iniquity means to bend or distort. To bend or distort. Now, I'm going to give you the definition of distort so it can help you out real quick. The definition of distort is to twist out of shape. To twist out of shape. So, it also implies certain weakness towards a certain sin. Amen. For an example, certain families, there are certain families that deal with the, watch this, the same sin. Tell you, neighbor, that's not a coincidence. If I'm gonna use for example, and no one, I'm not saying no one. If 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 that was a a man, if he was a womanizer in that family, guess what? It gonna go. It can go down to four generation, without even a person in the fourth generation have no idea that his great great granddaddy was a womanizer. Here's another one: fornication. There's a family that, there's certain families that would never get married. And fornic they fornicate, real, it, fornication is so strong in that particular family. Because why? Because it's an iniquity. Guess what, y'all? It's bent. It's out of order. This, is, this implies certain weaknesses in certain families. And guess what, y'all? I don't care what you say. Every last one of us in our family... We have some issues. Y'all looking at me straight. Because the pot can't talk about the cattle just because my family don't do this. Guess what? But your family do that. Don't you dare point your finger at our family because we jacked, on this, jacked up on this side. Yeah, but y'all jacked up on that side. <laughs> the pot can't talk about the cattle. Amen. It's still in God's eyesight iniquity. Amen? Still, God look at it a certain way. Real quick, give me Isaiah 53. I'm going to tell you, verse 5 and verse 12. Look what it say. But he was wounded for what? Our transgressions. And he was bruised for what? Our iniquity. That's two of them. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Verse 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he that poured out his soul unto death. And he was, watch this, talking about Jesus, he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the what? He bare the what? The sin of many, and made intersection for the transgressors. So if, 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 transgression and iniquity and sin was the same thing, then why he didn't just say sin? He talked about all three of them. And all three of them, guess what? One time or another, we have dealt with it. One way or another, we have, we have dealt with it. And some of us are still dealing with it. Amen. Amen. But notice he said, visiting the iniquity of the fathers. Now, I want to say this real quick because there are certain hereditary traits or family weaknesses that are passed from generation to generation. There are certain, y'all, that are passed. They are weak. There's, there's certain, watch this, y'all. That be, why, why all family pastor? Because why? Because when Adam sinned, this what happened. This what came into our world. And we all have to deal with it some way or another. And the problem is most of us had not recognized it because why? Because guess what? Because you got saved. Oh, by the way, if you are saved, guess what? You're not up under a generational curse. But that doesn't mean that you're not up under that generational cycle. Oh, Lord, help me in this house right now. I say, I'm going to say it again because you are saved, guess what? And I'm, I'm going to go to the scripture. Because you, you are saved, guess what? You are not under a generational curse, but there's still generational cycles that you are dealing with. Remember I told you last week? 
You know, you don't get saved because you don't automatically get saved. You got to do something. I wish I had some help. You got to do something in order for you to be saved. The plan have already been made. The same thing about these cycles that we are dealing with. Look, y'all, I've seen some stuff on both sides of my family. <laughs> and guess what? You too. You got some stuff on both. Look, you ain't talking about one side of your family. I'm talking about both sides of your family. Boy, I tell you. We, it, it don't look good, y'all. Amen. It doesn't look good. See, we have to, first of all, watch this. I'm going to help you out. We have to examine on purpose our family tree and recognize a pattern, whether it be a certain sickness, because some family, the whole family stays sick. Amen. Why you ask? Why you ask the question? Why why do the doc when you go to the doctor they ask you a question? You know when he, on that form, you know, and one of the questions is about you know your, your your family history, huh? The same thing work in the spirit. There's some stuff even the doctors understand that. So with certain sickness, disease, watch this, y'all. There's certain families that are dealing with mental or emotional problems. I, want, I try not to say sickness because that's what it is. It's a mental and emotional sickness that it just goes down through families. That stuff is not going to automatically jump off of you. Are you hearing me? Now, you know, we think that something automatically happened. But there are some things that you have to acknowledge you know. That's why we have the word. The word of God says study and show yourself approved. Y'all with me? Amen. Having children, listen, having children out of wedlock, child abuse. I know our first son, guess what, y'all? Our first son, and she made me do it, he was conceived out of wedlock. She made me do it. But I found out, watch this, I found out I was born, or I was conceived myself out of wedlock. Y'all looking at me strange right now. And watch this, y'all. It's a very common thing in the black society that the single parent or, 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 or a lot of us was conceived, watch this, out of wedlock. Y'all looking at me strange right now. And even the Bible, and please don't take this wrong, y'all, but if we are conceived out of wedlock, what does that call us? They call us, watch this, don't take this wrong, but this Bible calls us a bastard. And the definition of a bastard is an illegitimate child. Y'all looking at me strange. But I'm trying to help us get past this because, see, some of us have been saved too long and we're still dealing with this kind of stuff. Even the scriptures say, whom the son has set free is free indeed. But if you don't understand your freedom, then how are you going to be able to enjoy what Jesus left for us? So... Mm. Mm -hmm. When you get a when we let me say it, when we get to the root of our family, guess what? Guess what? There's only one word that we can say. It is a five-letter word, messy. Messy. Could I go there? Could I point? Could I point? Your family messy. My family was messy. They were messy. They was messy. All of us. Were, look, I'm talking about yeah. All of our family is some messy folks. Well, Pastor, I think all of us, because before your great great granddaddy got saved, guess what? He came from a messy tree, too. Well, my grandfather was a barge bishop and an apostle and all that. Yeah, before they got saved, it came from a messy family. Let's, let's clear this stuff. We got we to gotta break some cycles, y'all. And every last one of us, we got some cycles in us. I know, and family, don't take me wrong, but on both sides of my family, y'all, there's some selfish. Some selfish folks. And perhaps in your family. Because see, it's not that they want to be selfish, but we inherit those cycles from uh, somewhere in our genome, whether it was the second or third or the fourth generation. Don't look at my family cockeyed, because guess what? When you look at them cockeyed, and you looking at you might well do a boomerang because your family just as bad. Give me that. Could you put the picture?
picture up there. Give me the picture up there. I want to show you something. The tree started talking about depression. It started talking about overeating. It started talking about witchcraft. Look at the tree. It started talking about greed on this side, fear of rejection on this side, poverty. Because there's certain family they just pull. Nobody, they just pull. They just pull. That's a generational curse. Lust on one side. Then it got over here. It got suicide. It got rebellion. It got palm reading. It got on this side. It has divorce. On this side, it has pornography, it has an anxiety on this side, it has alcohol, it has lying on this side, on this side it got bad temper, you know, nobody here got bad temper. It got drugs on one side, it got control on this side, it got guilt on this side, it got cancer, because sometimes cancer is a demon. Hello lights. It got stealing, you know, some of you, you, you know, you just, you just got sticky hands. You just can't, I'm saved, sanctified, filled the Holy Ghost. Oh, oh man, I got me some here. God bless me with this. <laughs> Get back over there. Mm, I got some more. Amen, I got to get back there. Okay, it, it got uh, stealing, then it got word curses, that's such as, you stupid. You ain't no good, you're clumsy, sir. Just like your dad. I'm sick and tired. You ever heard those word curses? Boy, I'm so sick and tired. And guess what? Next week you're sick. Word curses. Then it got, then it got over here, got brother. Brother on alcohol and drugs. Sister suicide and divorce. Then it got over here, dad. Look, watch dad. Look what it say about dad. Dad, alcohol, pride, sexual abuse, adultery, anger, lying, and poverty. Then it got grandfather, sexual abuse, rage, Murder, greed. Then it has grandmother, passive depression and divorce. Then it got mother, rebellion, rejection, fearful, overeating, suicide, witchcraft, and cancer. Boy, mama was something else, wasn't she? Then it had grandfather, overeating, withdrawal, divorce. Then it got grandmother, white witch, control, cold, and bitter. Did, did y'all get that? Did, did y'all get that? Turn the lights back on. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I got 42 minutes to give you all I need to get. Somebody shout, that's messy. It's messy. It's messy. And see, some of us, we don't be careful. Guess what? You See, you think it's a cute thing, but you don't know that what's on you, if it don't come off on you, it's going to be on your children. And I never watched this, y'all. I have never seen so many Christians in oppression or depression. Can I go there for a second? You got more, you have, in some cases, you got just as many Christian in oppression and depression than you got people that don't even know Jesus Christ. It's, I'm in the house. Come on, let's be for real. And then you go and talk to your unsaved friend about all of what you're going through. Guess what? I don't want your God. So, here we go. This, the price for a generation, put this up there. The price for generational cycle has been paid. Thank God. It's been paid. It's already been paid. Ain't it something you go in the store? Look, you go in the store. Let me give you this quick example. You go in the store and somebody say, you, 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 you go to the counter with your merchandise and somebody say, well, it's been paid for. And you sit there and argue with them and say, well, I'm going to pay it anyhow. What, what sense do that make? The same thing with We've been, look, it's been paid for, the curses, the, the cycles that we're dealing with. And the thing about, why are we dealing with something that has already been paid for? Give me Galatians, third chapter, verses 13 through 14. I'm going to help you out today. Christ has redeemed us, what? From the what? The curse of what? The law. Now, the law... The, the law was not a curse because the law is holy. But the curse of the law, why I say the curse of the law? Because what makes it a curse is that, guess what? If you don't abide in all of it, then if you miss one of them, you're guilty of all of them. That's what makes it a curse. Y'all with me? Then it goes on to say, being made a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That the blessings of Abraham might come on what? Us, the Gentiles. How? Through Jesus Christ, that we might what? Receive what? The promise of the Spirit through what? Through faith. Look, y'all, they tell me that we ought to be walking in the blessings of Abraham. 
But we are so, look, we are so tied up and tangled up in the cycles that we are dealing with from day to day. How can we enjoy the blessings when we are struggling in the cycles? I wish I had a praying church. How can we enjoy, I got to say that again. How can we enjoy the blessings when we are in the cycles every day? Give me Titus 2 and 14. We're going to get to the meat of this. We're going to get you break, set free today. Watch this. Who gave himself for us that he might what? Redeem us from what? It didn't say sin. From all what? Iniquity. Remember that word iniquity? Mean distorted or bent? In so many words. Let me break it down. It's practice sin that we practice and don't even realize we're practicing it. <laughs> then it say, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good work. One of the words that stood out to me was, and I want you to catch this, because first of all, freedom, say this with me, y'all, freedom, freedom. calls. It calls Jesus' his life for us. So why are we not walking in freedom? Watch this. When it says redeem, I define redeem as to liberate or rescue from captivity of bondage. And if, it, if the truth be told, you listen to the conversation of believers, guess what? We act like Jesus ain't did nothing for us. We stay in bondage and but look, I, I can't understand if we're a believer why we are in bondage all the time. What sense does that make to get saved but yet stay in bondage? And I've seen, you know, some people is not going to get saved because of us. Because they don't want what we, oh, God help me in this house. They don't want what we got because why? Because we ain't showing no kind of liberty. We're not showing no kind of freedom, praise God. If the truth be told, look at your face. Look at your facial expression. It seems like you're drunk a gallon of pickle juice. And you can't fake this until you make it. Let's work with this for a second. Because see, once you become a child of God, you no longer, watch this, you, I mean, no longer will the sins of your forefathers cause curses to transfer into your life. Oh, I like this stuff here. So that means that, watch this, so before I got saved, when I cross over, guess what? That stuff stopped, but the cycle can still be there. See, see, can I go there for a second? Why? Why do you think some and they could be born again, they love Jesus, but they can't shake certain habits? Watch this. And the habits, see, you got to learn how to have habits and don't let habits have you. And they can't shake certain habits. They do certain things that, that it ain't right. But the ha watch this. But because they are in that cycle, I'm talking about believers, because they are in that cycles, they don't see their habit being a bad habit. I wish I had a praying church right now. That's why you got sinners, you got, I'm sorry, you got believers that are smoking, cussing, and drinking, and doing all that because they don't see nothing wrong with it. Because somewhere down in the gene line, or in their forefather, they inherit that cycle. What I'm preaching this morning. But the buck going to have to stop somewhere that that transference is not going to be coming through me no more to go through my children. Because I got to recognize, watch this, because first of all, you got to study what? Your family. Brother, they got treated. You can go to, uh, uh, what's that? Pull on a uh, uh, family, some... History, ancestry history, the DNA, you can go to all that. You got all kind of stuff laid out for us. I, look, I, I can find out about Papa. What kind of person Papa was. Then I find that Papa was a lion, Stephen, blah, 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 and all that. And that's why I got my way from I'm not, not me, I'm just saying. And you say, hold on for a second. That, that goes the cycle right there. That's where it started from. I got to stop that cycle right now. Got to go to the root. You, you know, you still cussing, cussing for a while, cussing. Because that stuff came through your gene line. 
You got that don't mean it's right that you do it because it's a cycle. Amen. You got to do something about it. And I'm, I'm going to share with you how I can deal with this for a second. Because I'm tired. I told my wife, I said, I, I told her, there's certain things in my family. I know in my family on both sides that, shoot, I got to get myself rid of. No, I love my, ain't nothing wrong. Look, and by the way, don't look at my family like that. I love my family on both sides. But the truth is the truth. Because guess what? Them jokers in the same boat on me. <laughs> and they need some help too. Yeah, come on now. I'll be looking at cross eyed and walk out of the church talking, ooh, that family. <laughs> you know, don't don't walk out there. <laughs> don't you walk out of the church doing that. You, when you start doing that, say, hold on a second. Man, I need to I need to find out about my family. So what I gotta do, watch this. I gotta Look, I got to get a form. I got to get the information about my family on both sides of the tree. Because you may be dealing with woman issue. Guess what? You need to find out where it came from because it probably came from from your great great grandmother. And all of a sudden, you, you can't have no children or whatever. Because why? Because you need to curse it. Yeah, okay. And call that name out of your grandmama. I'm going to show you how you break it. But first of all, you want to do your homework. Y'all with me? Tell your neighbor, you got to do your homework. You, you got to do it on your own. Amen. Give me Jeremiah 31 and 29 and 30. The first thing I want to deal with. Look what it say. In those days, they shall no more, watch this, the fathers have eaten of the Eating a sour grape and the children's teeth are set on edge. I'm going to tell you what that means. But everyone shall die for what? His own what? Iniquity. It is a sin. Iniquity. Oh, I'm, I'm going to go there. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. So in other words, guess what? That means that the children cannot no longer watch this blame their foreparents. See, I got to, first of all, I got to even repent for some of them. Oh, I wish I had some help in here. See, you sitting there talking about, well, my grandma was just sorry, and I'm sorry too. No, there ain't no excuse no more. My, my granddaddy, you know, this was the kind of person he was, and guess what? I guess I'm like that. Some cases, we got to stop letting folks say, like son, like father. Help me in this house right now. Because guess what? If my father was a drunk, don't you speak that over me because I'm not going to be a drunk. If my granddaddy was a drunk, don't you speak that over me because I'm not going to be a drunk. So that means that we're going to be owned up for our own sins. Amen. So the question is, Pastor, could you answer this? Why as a believer that it feels like I'm still in this generational cycle? There are at least three things I'm going to share with you. Then we're going to, we're going to get ready to close it out. Number one, the residue is still there. You have to recognize, hello, you have to recognize that you need deliverance from it. Ooh. The resident, when you got saved, guess what? The residue was still there. You're still doing all the stuff that you did before you got saved. You're trying to ask yourself the question. Guess what? I'm supposed to be saved. I shouldn't be doing this. Because you're up under that residue that you was connected to through the bloodline, and you got to recognize that, guess what? I need some deliverance from it. Got folks sitting in our churches today in bondage from generational cycles, can't get free. Can't get free. Because the residue is still there. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, if you see some residue on me, please tell me. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. Brother, you be acting crazy sometimes. Sister, what's wrong with you? What, I, don't see no, I don't see that on me. Yeah, you don't see, me, see it on you, but I see it on you. And a lot of times, other folks will see some on you that you don't see on yourself. But tell them, look, it's a man in the mirror. You need to look in the mirror and see yourself. You be saying, oh, do I be acting like that? And everybody do like this. <laughs> you do. And then they going to have a nurse say, I don't see that. That's why we're coming to tell you. Because we recognize that you don't see you. Yeah. 
My wife would tell me sometimes, she said, babe, she'll tell me, she said, see, you, you can't get no help until you acknowledge it. She should always tell the truth. Like, I don't want to receive it. So <laughs> she'll help me. So I don't be want to receive sometimes when she say, I don't see that. But I be lying through all of my teeth because I really do see it. I just don't want to receive it. <laughs> hey, man, I'm guilty. I'm in the boat with y'all, y'all. I'm in the boat. I got some generational cycle I, I, I need to break. Because why? Because I got sons and I got grandchildren and I got a couple of great grand. So I'm, that's four generations. So that four generations that, guess what? That the great grandchildren can get those cycles in my life if I don't break them. Number two, ignorance. Ignorance is the reason why you still feel like you're a trap. Ignorance. The Bible tells us, and you ain't got to put a scripture on this, but the Bible said in Hosea 4 or 6 that my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Ignorance. And watch this, y'all. Ignorance is no excuse. Wait a minute. Ignorance is no excuse because we got too much information out there. All you got to do is go pull up a certain topic and boom, it explode on your, on your cell phone. Ignorance is no excuse. Number three. We have to intentionally break these cycles of bondage that has already been passed down. And that's what we're going to try to do from here on out. We have to intention, intentionally on purpose. That when I find out what the generational cycle or curse in my life is, I got to intentionally break those generational curse. And how I do that, I'm going to have to go to the root of it. All our family. Can I go there for a second again? Man, all our family in some shape, form, or fashion is dysfunctional. And we need to go to the root of it. And if the church don't come to the knowledge of it, then guess what? We're blending in with the world. How can we help the world when we are operating like the world when it comes to generational cycles? You know one crazy thing that some parents do? Y'all, all of us, some of us may have done it, but look at the wall in case it's you. How are you going to sit there and do something so crazy in front of your child and then tell your child you don't need to do this? That's two different messages. So now you got the child all messed up in the mind because you're going to tell them you don't need to do this. You're sitting there smoking a stogie and smoking weed and you're telling your child you don't need to do this. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to do it. Because they're not, they're not going to they're not gonna hear what you say, but they're going to do what you do. You know what's funny? I'm going to tell you what's, what's been so funny. You're going to sit up there and, could I, go, could I be real today, y'all? You're going to sit up there and tell your child, you ain't nothing but a big old liar. In every word, other word that comes out of your mouth, la, 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 la. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. I'm talking about generational cycle. Because, see, for some children, guess what? It's a, that parent is a cycle that's in the way. That parent need to break some, oh, God, help me in this house right now. That parent is a cycle that's in the way of that child. That child could get, not get no help until that parent breaks that cycle. You see me right there? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you're doing more damage than you're doing good. So here we go. Pastor, get ready to close. Pastor, how to break generational patterns once and for all? Hmm. Now, when I started, if you, when you go to the root of it, there are some things that you still have to do after. I got, I got four ways I'm going to show you. Because watch this. Because if you don't break that cycle, guess what? I don't care how much you come up for deliverance. That demon is not going nowhere. In some cases, that's why you got worse. <laughs> because the demon, that, that's, that's demon, that demon cycle that's in your life is the gatekeeper. What do you mean gatekeeper? Open the gate for others to come in. Y'all ready? Number one. Acknowledge and confess the iniquities of your forefathers. That's number one. 
Acknowledge. When you acknowledge, you got to confess it. Give me Nehemiah. Nehemiah 9 and 2. It says, And the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers and stood and confessed what? Confess what, y'all? Confess their what? Confess their what? And what? And the what? And the iniquities, what? Of who? Of their fathers. If I found out that my forefather was a drunk, guess what? I'm confessing that. That's number one. I got to confess it. I'm, first of all, I got to acknowledge it. Once I find out about it, that means I have to acknowledge it. Then now I got to, what, what I got to do, I got to confess it. Because if there's no confession, there's no deliverance. I have to confess that thing. Got to get it off me. I'm helping you right now. I, it ain't going to work if you hadn't went to the root of it yet. You got to go find the root. You got to go to the root of it first in order for you to get some help. What happens when you cut the tree, when you chop down a tree from, from, the, from the surface of the ground? What will happen with that tree later on? It's going to come back up. Why? Because you never went to the root of the tree to cut the root. Because if you want to get rid of the tree, you got to do what? You got to go and pull up all of the roots of the tree. If you don't do that, then guess what? The tree going to come back. And that's what some of us will experience and seem like. Maybe it may, it may only happen. It may happen three months out of your life. I mean, three months out of a year, six months out of a year. It may even happen every week. But here you go. You're faced with the same cycle. And you never saw it as a cycle. This is what you said. Could I go there for a second? You said that devil always bringing that up. It ain't always the devil. It is not always the devil that's bringing something that's in you back up. It's a cycle. The cycle have a way of coming up in strange times. You can be enjoying life to the fullest, and here come a cycle. Oh, y'all going to help. I'm helping somebody. I hear the Holy Ghost right now. Uh, you, everything is going good for you, and then here come that cycle again. You forgot all about that cycle, and here it come again. Right back in there. Here you are. you happy and everything, and you know you deal. One of the cycles that you deal with is depression. And you happy all of a sudden and say, what happened to you? I don't know. All I know, I was happy one minute, the next minute, everything seems to be terrible. Everything seems to not be going my way. That's what depression makes it look like. It's a cycle. Is I'm helping anybody. You go to the root of it. Confess it, go to the root of it. Because Papa had depression. Great Papa had depression. Even my grandmama had depression. I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just saying this. Grandmama had depression, and guess what? I didn't ask for it, but I got it. I inherited it. Ain't that something, y'all? I'm so mad with Adam that when I, when I get to stand before the judgment, I say, Lord, before you call me into heaven, let me go and slap the taste out of Adam's mouth. Because it was just the sin, the one sin that Adam brought in. Guess what, y'all? We are all paying for it. But thank God for Jesus Christ. Because I'm going to help you right now. Thank God for Jesus Christ. That we don't have to no longer pay for it. And guess what? Yeah, we don't have to pay for it. But pastor, why keep coming up? Because you need to go to the root of it. You need to go to the root of it. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you need to go to the root of it. Number two, ask God to, ask God to forgive and cleanse us. 1 John 1, verses 7 through 9. But if you walk, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light. Somebody say, I need the light. We have what? Fellowship one with another. And what? And the, watch this. And the what? The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, does what? ETH. What? Constantly what? Cleaning us what? From what? All sin. Constantly cleaning us from all sin. Watch this. But if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And then what? And the truth is not in us. Verse 9. Watch this. If we confess our sins, plural, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, plural, and to cleanse us from some unrighteousness, 
all unrighteousness. So number two is that I got to forgive God. See, when I ask God to forgive me for my sins and wash me, I don't need to go back into it. But here's the problem, y'all. If I don't recognize the root from my foreparents, then it seems like I went to God in vain and asking God for clean, to clean me. Because watch this. It's almost like you clean something off of a surface and turn around and walk away from it and t- turn back and look at it, and the dirt is back on the surface. Now, who dirtied that thing back up? All of a sudden, it's dirty back up, and you're back, from, back to square one. Because why? There's that residue. Somebody said residue. There's that residue, and I just seem like I can't shake it. Guess what? You can't shake it. Oh, God. Can I go there for a second? You, I'm being honest. We cannot shake it until we go to the root. And it's when we go to the root that we can shake this thing. Oh, ah, hallelujah. And yes, that's right. And if we don't get rid of it, loved ones going to suffer along with you. And let me say this about married couples. <laughs> While you're talking about the husband and the husband family, you, you straighten your eyes out and talk about your family too. When you talk about your husband family, talk about your family too. Yo, crazy mama, your crazy mama. <laughs> <laughs> your crazy granddaddy, boy. See, that's why you need to go to, before you marry someone, I told someone, go to a family reunion where you can see a couple of generations there and say, oh, Lord, oh, no. Oh, shoot, man. But, look, I think we need to put that off right now. You, you nice guy and all that, but uh, what I saw, because watch this, because I heard folks say, you ain't married that whole family. Yes, you are. Uh-oh. You are marrying that whole family. If they crazy, guess what? You marrying a crazy. <laughs> y'all, y'all looking at me strange right now. That's why, see, that's why you got to be careful who you connect with. I'm not trying to go there, but I'm just saying. Hey, man, you know, talking about, oh, boy, she ain't like everybody. Everybody, if, if everybody, every, every woman, every woman, every, she ain't like every woman in that family, me. <laughs> that daughter cannot help it because she inherited that kind of spirit, anger. Y'all got, why y'all quiet? I want to thank you listening right now. You, you married, and uh, you singing right now? You talking about getting married, go to the family reunion. <laughs> Cause you sit, you sitting around there praying, I'm praying, I hope I get the right head. No, no, you wanna no, this time you need to see for your own self. Got somebody over there swinging like tars in over there. You better say, see ya. You say that's you say that's your what? That's your uncle? Oh Lord. <laughs> Y'all laughing at me. I, I'm, I, look, I've learned this over the years. It's in the gene line, and yes, you married a whole family. Because why? Because that, that husband or wife is still connected in the bloodline. And number three, use the authority of the name of Jesus. You can't use, and look, use the authority of the name of Jesus. Give me John the 16th chapter, verse 23 through 24. Look what it says. And in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you what? Shall ask what? The Father, how you do it? In whose name? See, you just can't ask the Father outside of the name of Jesus. You got to ask the Father how? In my name, he will what? Give it to you. Here there too, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask and you shall receive that, my, that your joy, that your joy may be full. So watch this. So, so I'm, 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 doing, I'm doing my research. I'm doing my research on my family. But at the same time, I need, to, I need to find out what type of medicine, spiritual medicine that I need to take. Mm-hmm. So when I, when I get to that, because see, ain't no sense of you finding out and don't, don't know what to do when you find out. So it's only the name of Jesus. Guess what? It's that mighty name of Jesus. And that's why it's important that you walk with him. Your walk with him be strong. Because I don't want to be calling on his name. He said, who's that calling my name? Now, I know he or him go to church every now and then, but who's that? 
So, so it's in the name of Jesus, the authority of the name of Jesus that I need to call on. Number four. This is why I like this. Number four. Declare your cycles are broken. Whoa. Declare your cycles are broken. Huh. Mark 11, chapter verse 22 and 23. Mark 11, chapter verse 20. Look what Jesus said. Jesus answered and said unto them, have faith in who? Now Jesus telling you to have faith in who? Have faith in God. Give me verse 23. <laughs> Let's try this one. <laughs> For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou, be, be, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe in that those things which he say shall come what? To pass. He shall have what? Whatsoever he say. Listen, watch this. Oh, no, they put it. Okay, y'all, good job. Listen, so, so hear, me, hear, me, hear me on this, y'all. I'm about to close out because I want you to, I, I really want you to understand this. My relationship with God is number one. The number one important thing that I must have. Right? The scripture tells us when it talks about a mountain or whatever, it's talking about a problem, it's talking about a trouble. When I, and the scripture tells us, watch this. He said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you authority to speak to your trouble. I'm going to give you authority to speak to your problem. And the reason why I'm going to give you that is because based on your walk with me, I trust you. I wish I had a praying church right now. And when you ask for it, watch this, when you ask for that very thing or that problem or that trouble, guess what? I'm going to move it out your way. In my research about my families, I need to know what I need to say and what I need to do. Because guess what? Those cycles or mountains in your life is causing you not to go to the next level. It's causing your stu- it's, it's stunning your growth in the Lord. It's taking away your joy. It's taking away your peace. And you're always frustrated. And you wonder why God left you. And when the scripture says, I never leave you nor forsake you. But you feel like a motherless child. So what is it? What is it? You speak to your problems, and your problems say, how you doing? I don't have to leave you, because in reality, your walk with God is jacked up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Your problem telling you this. You know, if you were sincere with God, I'll leave you alone. This was your problem. You wanted your problem still standing. Matter of fact, the more you talk about the problem, look, and, and, and the first thing you, the first, the first problem you made about your problem, you prayed about it. Ooh, I messed up. The scripture said, whatsoever you say. It didn't say whatsoever you pray. God help me in this house. You're praying about a problem with God, say so you talk about it. Talk to me about your problem, and your problem can be moved out of your way. In this case, for us today, y'all, guess what? Here's your homework. You need to go find out about your family. Well, Pastor, how I do that, guy? We'll help you out. You need to find out because, watch this, there are some secrets in your family that never been revealed. And that secret is connected to you. I know on my dad's side, y'all, I can say this on my daddy's side, is that they love, they keep secrets. They go to the grave with secrets. I'm just being honest. Where did that come from? Two or three generations up there. Listen, you need to hear this today. You, you can stop the cycle starting today. Well, they weren't in my life. They don't mean, guess what? Because they weren't in your life, whether your mama or daddy weren't in your life, guess what? The cycle and the blood is still there. I think I just answered a question. Someone was asking that question, but then they said, what if they're not in? I just answered that for you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My conclusion is, if you decide to break the cycle. What you, 
When you decide to break the cycle, you are being very, very unselfish. Pastor, what do you mean? Because watch this. Because whether you have children now or you're going to have children, you're setting your children up to experience the blessings of Abraham. I wish I had. I'm about to run up in this house. Right